So we should get started. And please feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Um, don't hesitate at all. Uh, so SEO, search engine optimization, is the process of influencing natural search results so that your web pages appear for the keywords you'd like to rank for, right? SEO is not buying keywords. This is not calling up Google and telling them where we want to rank. Um, it's not very fast, and it's, not, it's actually not that difficult. Exactly. Yeah, so Matt Cutts is the head of the web spam team at Google. So I like to, I sort of equate him to um, like the Federal Reserve Chairman of Google. Like he's the, right, what he says, everyone sort of decodes it and tries to understand it and they try and make assumptions on the algorithm um, based on what he says. So here's just a quick, um, a quick video on Matt Cutts uh, giving his, his definition of search engine optimization. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and essentially it just means trying to make sure that your pages are well represented within search engines. And there's plenty, an enormous amount of white hat, great quality stuff that you can do as a search engine optimizer. You can do things like making sure that your pages are crawlable, so you want them to be accessible. You want people to be able to find them just by clicking on links, and in the same way, search engines can find them just by clicking on links. You want to make sure that people use the right keywords. If you're using industry jargon or lingo that not everybody else uses, then a good SEO can help you find out, oh, these are keywords that you should have been thinking about. You can think about usability and trying to make sure that the design of the site is good. That's good for users and for search engines. You can think about how to make your site faster. Not only does Google use site speed in our uh, rankings as a, one of the many factors that we use in our search rankings, but if you can make your site run faster, that can also make it a much better experience. So there are an enormous number of things that SEOs do, everything from helping out with the initial site architecture and deciding what your site should look like, and the URL structure, and the templates, and all that sort of stuff, making sure that your site is crawlable, all the way down to helping optimize for your return on investment. So trying to figure out, you know, what are the ways that you're going to get the best bang for the buck, doing A-B testing, trying to find out, okay, what is the copy that converts, all those kinds of things. There's nothing at all wrong with all of those white hat methods. Now, are there some SEOs who go further than we would like? Sure. And are there some SEOs who actually try to employ black hat techniques, people that, you know, hack sites or that keyword stuff and just repeat things or that do sneaky things with redirects? Yeah, absolutely. But our goal is to make sure that we return the best possible search results we can. And a very um, wonderful way that search engine optimizers can help is by cooperating and trying to help search engines find pages better. So SEO is not spam. SEO can be enormously useful. SEO can also be abused and it can be overdone. But it's important to realize that, you know, we believe in an ideal world people wouldn't have to worry about these issues. But search engines are not as smart as people yet. We're working on it. We're trying to figure out what people mean. We're trying to figure out synonyms and vocabulary and stimming so that you don't have to know exactly the right word to search for what you wanted to find. But until we get to that day, search engine optimization can be a valid way to help people find what they're looking for via search engines. Um, you always have to take what Matt Cutt says with a grain of salt, right? He has to speak on behalf of Google. He has to talk to, to the masses. You have to, you have to take it um, with, within context a little bit. But for the most part, the point I'm trying to convey here is that SEO is not this manipulative thing that Google doesn't like, right? <clears throat> it's very acknowledged and accepted in the community. There's a big spectrum now, right? There's a large number of people doing great things and there's also, there's a, it scales down all the way to people who are circumventing the rules, breaking the rules, breaking the law sometimes. So um, just keep that in mind. So, um, you know, every every vertical is different, and every every SEO will probably tell you something different. There's been a lot of different studies, but in general, there's about a 70-30 split between um, paid and organic search. Now, this this really varies depending on what industry you're in. Some people will say this is totally off. Some people said this will say this is dead accurate. Um, this is sort of the guide that we use at PayPal. That there's a, about 30% of searches will go to paid and about 70% will go to the organic listings. Um, so it's important to keep that distinction. And um, there's a number, you know, pretty much every 
every year a new click-through rate study comes out. The first one happened in 2006. There was actually a data leak at AOL. And people took all this, um, all this data from the search engines and they, they tried to put together a click-through rate chart, right? basically trying to determine what is a number one ranking worth, what is a number two ranking worth. And ever since then, there's been a lot of studies. It's usually agencies that go about doing it. Um, so there's a lot of studies. There's a lot of variation. When Google changes the search engine results page, that changes click-through rates as well. So there's some queries now, um, a lot of like hotel-related queries, where you'll type something in and there's one organic result, and the rest are paid. So it, it changes a lot. But for the most part, this is roughly the chart I use. Um, uh, this is sort of a culmination of a lot of different agency charts, but in general, about 35 to 40% of all clicks will go to the first result. But the big takeaway here is that the top three results take 60% of all the queries, and um, the top five take about 75%. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about query refinement, is that Google has delivered relevant results to the top five results so frequently that we're much more likely to change our search than we are to go to page two or page three. And that's why 75% of clicks are going to the top five results. When if you outsource your SEO to an agency, a lot of the times sneaky agencies will say, yeah, we have you on page two for 100 keywords. But in reality, because click-through rates are so low you know, on the second page and even, on the, even in the bottom five results, you're, really, you're still invisible if you're, if you're that low in the search. So, so this idea of query refinement, the idea that people are really only sifting through the top five results is what makes SEO so important today. You have to be in the top five or you're, or you're nowhere. So this is what we're going to be talking about when we, we, uh, we use a lot of jargon today. Uh, when we talk about title tags, this is the search snippet we're talking about. This should be in your, in your notes. This is the title tag, right? The display URL below that in green. And this is the search snippet or the meta description. Just some of the things we'll be, we'll be covering today. So there's, um, we don't need to go through all of this, but there's uh, a number of different algorithm updates uh, that Google has created over the last decade or so. And as we, as we said earlier, the search engine algorithm updates more than once a day with minor updates that we probably don't notice. But there's roughly, roughly every year and a half to two years, there's a major algorithm shift uh, where they significantly change how they're doing things and, um, and it really throws people off. The Hilltop update, the Florida update, Big Daddy, um, some of them were, were very controversial because um, I think it was the Florida update was, was, was really tricky because they did it in November and it really threw off people's estimates for the holidays. There are a lot of e-commerce sites that got burned during Christmas because Google changed their algorithm in November and all of a sudden everyone lost their, their search engine uh, positions. So we don't need to go through all of these, but the point here is that if you got really into SEO and you studied it for five years and then you stopped, you stopped learning, you stopped staying up to date on it, you would be out of the loop within a year, with maybe even less because the, the algorithm is always changing, it's, focus, it's emphasizing different things. So it's, it's the kind of practice that you need to constantly keep yourself updated with. So numerous algorithm updates over the last decade have occurred because Google realized very early on that search would become the backbone of everything they do. Google does a lot now, right? They're Google Maps and Google Docs, and they're in a lot of different areas. Google Drive just came out, right, to go head to head with, with uh, Dropbox, and they, they release those augmented reality glasses. I mean, they do, they do everything. But search is the backbone of, 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 uh, of everything that they do. You guys remember this commercial? 